It's really hard to believe that we are already in the last half of February. It feels like the winter season had just started, but we are now closer to the spring weather than we think. We have been taking advantage of the ski weekends as much as possible, and in episode 14, we hang out in Luna and go over all of my ski gear for 2021. What is going on squad? By the time you guys are watching this video, I am most likely in Ocala, Florida, probably getting my butt kicked by some 12 year old kid in a go-kart race. But I figured it would kind of be a good time to put out a video to a question I've been getting a lot lately, which is just questions about my ski gear and what gear do I use? I wanna preface everything by saying I'm not sponsored. I did not get any gear. Um, I pay for all the equipment that I have here. So this is my bag. It is from a company named, can you guys see that? Zip line. I'm gonna start with the not so fun stuff, but I do think it's important. And then we'll just move right on. So obviously ski socks, make sure you guys get yourself a good pair of ski socks. Ski socks are huge. Um, keep your feet warm and just make sure that your boots fit really well. So I just have a generic pair of ski socks. These are the Burton leggings I use underneath my ski pants. And then I wear, I've worn these for about like six, seven years now. They're two thermals. One is a 3X and one is a 4XL. Um, and I just wear these over like a shirt and then put my coat over these. I've never had an issue being cold. If I'm hot, I just take one off. This is my Oakley. I think it's like an Oakley factory pilot or something it's called. Yeah, factory pilot. Pretty standard jacket. There's nothing crazy on it. Like I wish it had like the hand gaiters and stuff, uh, but you know, powder cuff. And I don't know, it's just, a, I like the jacket, I like the cut on it. The hood fits over my helmet, which is always nice to stay like extra warm. And then my pants are like super basic. They're literally just black pants from Predator Wear. They fit me pretty well. Um, they're super water resistant and I actually been rocking them with suspenders. I, ha I didn't used to use suspenders, but I just recently used them probably like two, two years ago and just makes it so the pants don't feel like they're like so right on your waist. They're a little bit more like free flowing, free fitting or something like that. So all my gear works for me. I think that's the biggest, biggest part of it. I try not to get too caught up in this sort of stuff, but uh, maybe I'll upgrade my ski coat or something here soon. I don't know if, how many people really know about this sort of stuff, but this is a chest protector. I don't wear this all the time, especially when my camera's on my back and all that stuff. It just makes, makes my kit really, really bulky and heavy, but I wore this for like almost three, four years straight when I lived out in Colorado. Um, and it just adds so much protection when you're hitting cliffs, park jumps. Um, I highly recommend some sort of protection device. This is from a company called Demon United. Again, I just bought this off backcountry like years and years ago. Okay, helmet. Huge advocate of a helmet. I will never ski without a helmet, even if I'm just out cruising. This is my Pret helmet. No complaints, it fits me really well. I'm probably due for a new one just to be safe. But again, it has the adjustment in the back. Super, super light, very comfortable. Um, yeah, just keeps my noggin, noggin safe. Now the fun stuff, I wanna get into the gloves. I have a few different pairs of gloves. I basically always, always, always wear glove liners. Um, I probably wear them too much. They are completely just beat up. Like almost every finger has holes in them, but most of the times I will just wear these even on powder days. Like I don't, I don't know. I just have warm hands, I guess. Then I have basically like a series of three pairs of gloves that I'll kind of rotate between. The first pair are these zip line. Um, I don't even know what these are called because these are kind of like almost just like test gloves, like beta gloves in essence. But this is a very small light pair that I use for kind of pre and post season, like spring ski and things like that. Next one up are these bigger sort of, just kind of like your standard winter glove. Again, these are by Zipline. You can see they are very, very worn. Um, on both of the palms here. And they have a lot of padding like up in the palms just for if you hit a tree or something like that. So this is kind of like my, if I'm gonna wear a glove, this is gonna be my most common glove that I wear. And the Mac Daddy, which if you're familiar with skiing, you know, these are Hestras. These are just like absolute monsters, um, super warm, like just, yeah, these are like next level. These are super expensive. Um, but if I'm going like deep, deep pow day or just like, really going out for a rip. I don't know. I don't wear these too often because they're so nice, but um, yeah, these gloves are awesome. Next, maybe one of the most interesting bits for people are goggles. So I have, again, these are Zipline goggles. They are essentially the same frame, just one is a lot newer. It's kind of like the newer model. This one's a little bit more beat up, like just because I've worn these for like 
four years, I think, before upgrading to here. I have two frames just in case something were to break. Um, and then for my lenses, I keep in here. I typically only carry two different types of lenses with me. This yellow pair, you can see kind of, you can see through it. Um, this is for like low light conditions. So like, like it's been all week basically where it's socked in, really foggy, snowy. These are gonna help you see very, very, very well. So I really don't have a problem seeing. And they are very easy to change out. As you can see, they're all just magnet. This is like a mirror pair. It's like dark sunglasses for when um, it's really, really sunny out. These are the lenses I'm gonna use. Again, they just clip on. And now I got two different pairs of uh, lenses, goggles. I can keep these with me in my backpack um, and it's no issue to change them out. So I think it's time now for some of like the big stuff, the good stuff. Let's unclip these here again. Really, really cool design on the side of the zipline bag. They just kind of sear it in here, two buckles. Um, this cap goes over the top so in case it's snowing, you're not getting snow in your boots, things like that. So this is the Del Bello Krypton. I'm liking these boots more and more and more, but at first I wasn't a huge fan of them. I used the Technica boot for like five years. That was just amazing. Um, and it was so broken in and just like, it was it was falling apart. That's how much I had worn it. Um, so that's why I had to get new boots. But these are 110 flex. Um, so they're not like super, super stiff, but they're definitely not a soft boot either. It's kind of like that um, middle to more stiff boot, just because kind of the more advanced of a skier you get, the more pressure you put on your boots, on the front of your shins, things like that. So I wanted a boot that was very stiff for big mountain stuff, but also um, not too stiff where it wasn't fun to just play around the mountain on. So that's why I got these. They're super lightweight, which I love. It's like carrying these around, putting them on my feet. They're, they're awesome. It just sometimes I just feel like I don't have the responsiveness that I was used to. If you ask me if I would recommend these, I would say, yes, I recommend these boots. They are nice boots. I'm so afraid everything's gonna come crashing down and just like destroy my van. It's hard to do this in a van. I have three different pairs of ski poles here. Can you see that? Okay. I'll try to, I'll find the names and I'll put them on the screen because I just don't remember the names of all this stuff. But this is a Kevlar graphite hybrid pole. This is primarily a mogul pole. So it is pretty stiff, lightweight, very strong, small baskets. Um, and this is just a solid pole just for running out, groomers, whatever, park stuff. Like I dig this pole. So that's all I got to say with that. I use this a lot. The pole that I use in the bulk of the season that I just switched to is this lollipop. Um, it's a little different material. It's a lot, I think it's lighter. The swing weight's a little, little different um, and it's a lot more um, flexible. So I like this for, sometimes I've broken poles before. I've actually worked with zipline specifically on this lollipop pole where I actually snapped this in half. Um, when I was in Breckenridge, I hit like a cliff and when I landed, um, it kind of sucked in the ground just completely snaps. So I like this because it's a little bit more forgiving. The basket on it is awesome for trekking through powder and things like that. And um, yeah, I, I really love this, this pole just for the bigger mountain stuff, power skiing, things like that. Um, and then the last pole I have, which I don't use this that often at all. And I actually want to give away a pair of these. I have a new, a brand new set of this same exact pole that I do want to give away. I just don't know the best way to do this just yet. This pole I use when I go like heli skiing, when I go um, cat skiing, if I'm ever going to do anything that's a little bit more serious backcountry, really big mountain sort of stuff. And I guess the only reason why is that it's a little bit taller. These are 38 inches or 96 centimeters. Um, so super, super short. They come up to like my hips. And these are just a little bit longer. These are 40 inches. So they're two inches longer and they're just a little bit easier to use when you're in unpredictable conditions, I think. Let me know if you guys would be interested in a giveaway of a pair of these. I have another set of 40 inch poles. So... I want to give those away again just want to make sure i do it in a way that makes sense the first ski i want to talk about is the ski i've used for like five years this is the armada arv zero i think it's like a 96 or 98 underfoot it's a 177 um length i'm 510 so you can see where it goes this ski is literally it's coming apart i don't know if we can even get a zoom on this but the whole toe piece is coming apart here and you can see how worn it is just on one side from hitting the tips when i'm skiing moguls and things like that and the bindings that i have on both skis are i don't want to hit the ceiling guys um they are tyrolia attacks these are actually fisher attacks but they're basically the same thing um 16. so this ski i am i am completely center mounted on this ski which means I'm mounted right in the middle of the ski here. The biggest reason why I started to change away from these, apart from the fact that they are beat up, was the fact that when you get in big mountain stuff, these are really not a good ski that I found 
for hitting cliffs and things like that. One, because the underfoot is just too narrow, and two, when you're center mounted like that, it just makes when you hit cliffs and you're landing and things like that, it's really easy to get bucked forward more, um, where a little bit more rear mounted ski, you're just gonna naturally be um, a little bit, have a little bit better um, center of gravity or just balance on the ski when going down steep slopes like that. And it's also a little bit easier to manage powder. So pros and cons of each setup. And then the next ski, which you guys have seen me ripping on basically all season. Oh, I think my mom just came here. Hold on guys. Anybody home? What up? I'm sorry to interrupt you son, but if, it's all good. if I didn't come out here, I never would forgive myself. Dumping snow, geez. It is all of a sudden. This is the Luna? Yep. This is her. Pardon the interruption guys, my mom actually came out to check out Luna. She's never seen the van since it was completely built. So I gave her a little tour, but I wanna finish this. We're almost done. Just have one more ski left. And that is the Armada JJ 116 ARV. Um, this ski is an absolute beast. The more and more I ski it, the more and more I actually um, just really love it no matter what conditions I have, whether it's just groomers, powder, it doesn't matter. This ski so far has just been awesome. It looks freaking dope, which is so cool. Uh, I think this is like the 2019 or 2018 model. Um, so not the newest one, uh, but I really, really like this. I have the same bindings. They are the um, Tyrolia Attack 16s. Again, same thing. These skis are a lot, lot fatter. They're actually also taller. These are 185. So it's a 185, 116 underfoot. And I'm actually slightly more rear mounted on the ski. So I'm not completely center mounted. It just makes rip and pow and charging bigger lines so much easier. They're super playful, super soft, responsive for buttering around. Really, really, really love these skis. Again, this isn't meant to be like a review on my equipment. I just wanna show you guys what I'm using for 2021. So I think that's like about it guys. That's like my entire ski kit. Please drop a comment if you have any questions or comments or anything like that. I'd love to talk some ski gear with you guys. Um, and I hope you uh, got some value out of it. So I will see all of you guys on Tuesday in the next episode. Um, it's going to be some go-kart action. So hopefully you'll, you'll come by, check it out. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for the support. This month has been insane on the channel. So I appreciate all you guys. Thank you all so much. Take it easy, fam. Peace out.